I'm not afraid of changing my mind. I'm not afraid of being a hypocrite. I know that every day I have the freedom to choose what I want. And if I change my mind, it's only because I'm growing, learning, and accelerating towards something better. So don't be ashamed of telling people, I don't want to do that anymore. I was wrong. I didn't know what I didn't know. These are the keys to a way to balance, a happiness, the ability to create abundance and make more money, and most importantly, have fun while we're helping so many people. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning into the Brain Tea Productivity Podcast. I am your host, Alex Cahill with another plan to reach new levels of greatness. Today's productivity plan is with my mentor and coach, David Melzer, uh, the co-founder of Sports One Marketing and the author of the best-selling book, Game Time Decision uh, Making, uh, the executive uh, producer of the Bloomberg and Amazon Prime television series, uh, Two Minutes Drill and The Office Hours, uh, and the entrepreneur number one uh, digital business show, Elevator Pitch. Uh, the host of top entrepreneur podcast, The Playbook. If you haven't subscribed to his podcast yet, uh, please do. It's incredible. More than 800 podcasts. Uh, and David, also the chairman of my favorite charity, uh, The Unstoppable Foundation. David, I am very excited about our call today. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to share this conversation with us. Oh, thanks for having me. And I uh, love the idea of brain tea and your mission is so symbiotic to my mission of empowering others to empower others to be happy and the primary goal of happiness is obviously taking care of our health and reminding ourselves of our health and our wealth and our worthiness and our happiness are are closely tied together and we have to figure out what we're doing to interfere with that and you're on a mission to stop that interference uh, David, our community also is uh, obsessed with being more productive and getting more done. And I honestly can't think of anyone better than you to learn from. Uh, you're making great things happen nonstop all the time. Uh, what is it like to be someone as busy and productive as yourself? And what are the lessons that you can share with us today? Yeah, well, I don't believe in the word busy. I believe in the word active. Busy is somebody that's unaccessible and productivity needs to be married to accessibility, accessibility to others, and also the ability to access what you want is another type of accessibility. And then of course, utilizing the third lens, not only of productivity and accessibility, but of gratitude. The powerful lens that finds the light, the love, and the lessons, which you aforementioned, for us to understand and grow and learn and accelerate through the productivity of efficiency, effectiveness, and statistical success in what we're doing. And so what I've done is I've based it off of four values. Gratitude, as I mentioned, forgiveness, which will bring us peace. That means we have less interferences, void shortages, and obstacles when we utilize forgiveness as a superpower. And then accountability instead of liability. So I don't worry about blame, shame, and justification. I simply see things as if I've attracted it to myself and what am I supposed to learn? And then understanding the difference between motivation and inspiration. Motivation allows us to get up, get back up, get started, get back started, but inspiration will get us there. Living in a world of more than enough, clearing the interference between limitlessness and infinity for us to exist in an abundant world of more than enough, which I base the foundation that you're so friendly with. Our unstoppable foundation is a foundation of abundance, living between limitlessness and infinity. Now, what I'd like to do, I want to offer to everyone for free my five daily practices and my book, David at dmelzer.com. Five daily practices uh, are what create that productivity, the accessibility, and the gratitude in our lives, creates efficiency, effectiveness, and statistical success in our lives, allows you to make a lot of money, help a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. This is the recipe book, the recipe for success, passion, profitability, all and purpose, all in one simple uh, five daily practices. So number one, I'm gonna teach you how to know your what. Personally, what you want, experientially what you want, giving wise what you want and receiving wise. I'm gonna teach you how to find your who. Who can I help and who can help me? I'm gonna teach you how 
to be a student of your calendar. I'm going to teach you how to get it done by studying the activities that you have planned, don't have planned, and your sleep. And then when you know your what, your who, and your how, you're capable of prioritizing your now and understanding what activity keeps me present in the productivity, accessibility, and gratitude that I want to be in, in a trajectory towards the what, the who, and how that I want. Not what other people want, not what you don't want, not what's missing, but what you want. And then finally, the fifth step that I want to send to everyone is to apply your why. Don't search for your why. Don't wonder what your why is apply your why apply the inspiration to the what the who the how and the now and you will be productive accessible and gracious you will have statistical success and efficiency beyond imaginable measures this is how i have been able to create abundance in my life of happiness health wealth and worthiness through the values and the five daily practices. And that's what I teach you, Alex, through my coaching and would offer it to everyone to come join me, David at dmeltzer.com. You mentioned forgiveness. Can you give examples of how forgiveness can uh, can, can help us be more productive? It's just like- oh, absolutely. If you just look at the amount of time that we spend in judgment, condition, and interference with what we want because we're incapable of forgiving. See, if we're able to forgive, we have no need to be right, no need to be offended, no need to be inferior or superior or separate. We have no need to attack other people. We have no need for judgments and conditions that create a perception of difficulty, avoid shortages and obstacles. If we're capable of pursuing our perfection through forgiveness, of understanding my pursuit of my perfection is to be capable of forgiving the unforgivable. When we can reach the levels of awareness and enlightenment to forgive the unforgivable, to not create resistance, voids, and obstacles, but to remind, remember, recollect the unity that exists between us and the most powerful source of light, love, and lessons and everything else in existence. In other words, forgiveness is the cleanser of interference. It creates the flow of what we already are and what we're connected to and through with appreciation, meaning we add value, with the forgiveness to clear that interference, void shortages and obstacles, with accountability to provide us control so we don't live in blame, shame, justification, and not in control. And then finally, what does this represent? An inspired, an in spirit livelihood of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude. I love it because you would think of how to manage tasks, but it's more like looking inward what is holding me back. Yeah, you know, you cannot find outside of you what you can't find inside of us. So, so many times we're trying to make things happen instead of realizing that three laws of nature dictate our existence. The first law is the law of gravity. The law of gravity says we are exactly where we're supposed to be. Our feet are on the ground. We are at the right place at the perfect time. Then we need to institute the law of Goya, G-O-Y-A. Get off your ass, make it happen, angle towards what you want, have a desire that you must be what you can be, enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of your own potential. Like I said, not other people's potential, your potential. And then finally, if we utilize the law of gravity with the law of Goya, now the beacon of attraction works. The law of attraction allows all the things that we wanted to come to us rapidly and accurately, but it comes to us with a currency of faith, not just a currency of money. A currency is an object of energy that we put into the flow to get what we want. And the currency of faith through the three laws of gravity, Goya and attraction say that we may be angling towards what we want, but we're gonna end up somewhere better. So you see, faith is the ultimate GPS. Not only will it reroute you when you go off of the direction that you put in, meaning if you miss the the exit or you have a flat tire, or you end up at the donut shop when you're supposed to be somewhere else, it reroutes you, but not to your original destination, mind you, but it reroutes you to a better destination, a better situation. And that's what faith allows us to have in the context of gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and inspiration. 
what is it like like your daily routine how do you process all this amount of work at the same time yeah so number one my tomorrow starts today so one of the paradigm shifts in my life is that i have an unwinding routine at 9 p.m so i put my body my mind and my soul into the appropriate position to one recover physically so i have the most capability of utilizing this extraordinary energy that i've been given uh, but also to increase the download or the wisdom or enlightenment while I'm sleeping, because while I'm sleeping, my subconscious and unconscious are out of my own way. So I'm downloading information. So most people, when we talk about routine, will say, you know, I start at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine a.m. and I do this, I do that. Not me. My tomorrow starts today at nine p.m. because I don't want to live the myth of Sisyphus. You know, Camus wrote in The Stranger, Sisyphus was uh, cursed. He had to push a boulder to the top of the mountain every day just to have it roll down to the bottom of the mountain. This is what I see the majority of human beings doing every day, living their lives as tube, putting food in the mouth, pooping it out the other side. That's their entire existence, week to week, month to month, paycheck to paycheck, pushing a boulder to the top of the hill just to start over the day in the same place. Not me. My tomorrow starts today with an unwinding routine. I plateau and grow because every morning I wake up at a higher frequency, utilizing that as a baseline to know when I'm at my highest frequency so that when the ego-based consciousness creates interference and creeps into my life with the need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, or any of these terrible things that stop me from getting what I want, I simply stop, drop, and roll. I go back to that place, that baseline, and I use and study my calendar in order to effectuate this mathematical equation of productivity. See, the mathematical equation of productivity is what I pay attention to, the things I have planned, the things I don't have planned, the sleep that I'm going to have, or even the activity that I get paid for or the activity I don't get paid for. You know, you mentioned the word work and busy. Those aren't in my vocabulary, right? I just have activities I get paid for and activities I don't get paid for. Everybody's given 24 hours a day of activity. I'm going to be productive. I'm going to be accessible and I'm going to be gracious with the activities that I have. And I'm going to utilize my time in the most efficient, effective and statistically successful way by plateauing and growing, by using the mathematical equation of productivity, what I pay attention to, what I give intention to, what I think, say, do, believe, and even understanding my personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions, these quantum natures that I've had, the unconscious competency of David Meltzer, attention plus intention equals the coincidences that I want. And guess what everyone says when you use that mathematical equation of productivity? It's also the mathematical equation of luck. It's also, and people are like, oh, that Dave Meltzer, he's so lucky. How does he make it happen? I'll tell you how I make it happen through productivity, accessibility, and gratitude by utilizing the mathematical equation of productivity. Attention plus intention equals coincidence. I love it. We're going to jump to questions here. I have a few questions from the community. Uh, question number one uh, is from uh, Jan. Uh, she's asking, I started teaching piano classes and I have problem with money. I price my uh, lessons very low and I find it hard to uh, receive the money from uh, students. Although they love my classes, how to fix my relationship with money? Yeah, well, first of all, you have to understand uh, there's three levels of teaching that you need to get. You need to teach people with no money for free. And you need to teach them and help them for free. If they don't have money, it's not worth working for nothing. And then you, from teaching people for free, you build what's called perceived value. And perceived value is determined upon how much value you're providing those people for free and what people think you're worth. And then you also have to know your bottom line. And you will feel comfortable receiving money that exists between the bottom line and the perceived value. And in that context, what I would do is I would help you know people with no money for free. I'd create groups that can't afford the bottom line or perceived value of what you're creating. And then through all of that effort, productivity, accessibility, and gratitude that you provide value, 
you will have people that are attracted to you that will pay you for one-on-one -on -one access that is somehow between the perceived value and the bottom line that you have. So help people for free, create groups that can aggregate something that's worth your time. And then the higher end clients that fit between the perceived value and the bottom line will come to you and you will build a huge piano practice and you will feel comfortable knowing that you are worthy of everything you receive, that you're providing more value than you're asking for. You also, last tip, you need to practice articulating the value that you provide to exceed what you're asking for. If you cannot articulate the value that you provide to exceed what you're asking for, you're not ready to receive. The second question very quickly from Vera Sadlik. Uh, are there any difference between men and women in terms of how they sit to achieve goals and uh, any advice for a woman who wants to create impactful business but also remain happy and fulfilled with work and at home? Well, you know, I don't separate things by uh, our sex. Uh, I separate it by our energy. And there are feminine energies and masculine energies, and they approach business in different manners. Uh, and so I think it's important to understand what balance or blend of masculine and feminine energies that we carry, regardless of what anatomy we've been blessed with when we're born. Uh, and so I do a lot of internal inventory and analysis of my own energies and where I can utilize the masculine energies that I have and the feminine energies in the context of making money, helping people and having fun. Uh, so please uh, try to utilize that type of inventory. And then on the other side, everybody is concerned about balance, work, life, health balance. You need to come up with your non-negotiables, number one. So for me, my non-negotiables are health. I spend a minimum of an hour a day on my health regardless of what happens to my routine. So if you want to make God laugh, one of the easiest ways to make him laugh at you is come up with a well-developed routine or plan. So I have an adaptable routine that says no matter what, I have a minimum of an hour a day on my health. Then my family. I spend a minimum of 30 minutes a day with my wife, a minimum of 30 minutes a day with my 11 year old son, a minimum of two minutes a day with my teenage daughters. I asked for five minutes, they gave me two, but two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. And then one minute a day minimum with my mom to tell her four things, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I love her and appreciate her, meaning she adds value to my life. Uh, and then, of course, I spend a minimum amount of my time in the mathematical equation of productivity, being a student in my calendar, utilizing the lenses of productivity, accessibility, and gratitude in order to effectuate the efficient, effective, and statistically successful productivity that I need in my life. These non-negotiable values allow me to keep a weighted balance between the personal, experiential, giving, and receiving values I have each day and I'm not afraid of changing my mind. I'm not afraid of being a hypocrite. I know that every day I have the freedom to choose what I want. And if I change my mind, it's only because I'm growing, learning, and accelerating towards something better. So don't be ashamed of telling people, I don't wanna do that anymore. I was wrong. I didn't know what I didn't know. These are the keys to a weighted balance, a happiness, the ability to create abundance and make more money, and most importantly, have fun while we're helping so many people. Sorry, we're not able to uh, answer all the questions. I see more questions from uh, Shannon, Carmen, and Roni, but I believe David had answered your questions during the call. So uh, thank you for that. You can find David on YouTube, Instagram, Clubhouse, and social media for daily coaching on uh, growth strategy and advice. Please email david at dmelzer.com for his signed copy of the book and all other requests. Uh, David, you are always my inspiration. I appreciate your consistent efforts to, uh, to provide value to others. Um, any uh, last thing that you would like to tell people or where to find you in a way that I have missed? Thank you so much, Alex. I've Thank appreciated so this opportunity. If anyone wants any of these values or daily practices or my book, ebook, audiobook, mm -hmm. want me to sign a book, send it to you and ship it, david at dmeltzer.com. Please put it in the notes, Alex. It's been such an honor to be here. Thank you.
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some great value and you enjoyed this video. Please support our mission in raising awareness of mental well-being by sharing this video with your family and friends. And please like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel to be able to receive and watch our new videos.